It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. Yes, yeah, a good wait. <sighs> and it smells. Oops, steady. Behind the wheel of a classic car. Good morning, my lady. Good morning, Parker. And a goal to scar Britain for antiques. Whoopsie. Come on. The aim to make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. <laughs> They'll be worthy winners. <laughs> And valiant losers. <laughs> Will it be the high road to glory? It's about winning. Or the low road to disaster? Pop hole! This is the Antiques Road Trip. What fun. Say hello to Shropshire, the friendliest of counties. Do you know about the landy waves? There we are, see? You've got to wave to everyone who's got lap trailer. All land rovers wave at each other. That's it. Manoeuvring their wave magnet along the byways of Britain are affable auctioneers Tim Methurst and Catherine Southern. Don't you want to just do something with that tyre, though? I feel like I want to I quite like get out that. and start changing tyres and yeah, things. It's, it's like a giant mascot. Certainly makes a change from rabbit's feet and nodding dogs. Did you know Churchill had his very own custom Land Rover? He had what? Custom made. Oh, custom. Oh, they said custom. <laughs> Our one's much more panna cotta, I'd say. Ah. Yeah, I think I would like one of these to be a bit more custom-made for us. Catherine from Kent is a woman with unusual tastes. Do you want to see something gory? Right up my street. Whereas Dorset man Tim is what you call eclectic. I'm a big fan of green and a big fan of ladybirds. Lordy. Well, I quite like weird sandwiches. That doesn't surprise me. I like cheese and onion crisps with strawberry jam. Um, golden syrup and cheese. Well, whatever their own personal predilections, when it comes to this malarkey, buy for the sale room. To Stroud auctions, to military auctions. So we need to really concentrate on a very low budget. <laughs> Ouch. Catherine set forth with £200, and after three extremely unfortunate auction experiences, she now has just £73 and 98p. While Tim, who began with the same sum, has hardly seen a loss, sailing serenely towards £428.30. Or, as Charles Dickens might have described it, a tale of two road trips. I've got champagne taste and beer money. Actually, I haven't even got beer money. I've got... You've got one I... round. <laughs> no, I can't even buy a round. After starting in Sussex and then shopping mostly towards the west, our two turned up towards the Thames. This bit finds them very close to the Welsh border and various shires just south of the Midlands, before a West Country wind-up in Wiltshire at Devizes. Oh, look at the sheep. They look happy to see us. They do. Today's auction takes place in the Gloucestershire town of Stroud, but we begin in Brimfield, where Tim gets the freedom of the village having already dropped his companion off en route. And what's Brimfield brimming with? Tench treasure, of course. Usually breaks into a trot at this point. There he goes. Keen to splash some of that cash, no doubt. Hello, hello, hello. Go and find some antiques, shall we? Right you are, Ossifer. Do you know what? Oh, I'm so glad that there is Militaria in the shop after hoping. And this is a lovely little thing. This is called trench art. During the First World War, when the soldiers were in the trenches, they used to make trinkets out of bits of old shell. And they've made an officer's cap. And on it, we've got the brass strap. And this is an old button here that they've attached as the badge. And I just think they're absolutely charming. And there are collectors for them. Trench art collectors love these little pieces. I don't think it will struggle selling, but it all comes down to price, doesn't it? And um, what was on that? £55 as a ticket in there. Do you know, it doesn't seem a lot of money for what it is. My gut's saying there's probably not a lot of profit in it. My heart's saying buy it because I love it. I'm going to pop it back. Carry on looking and see what else we can find. Propitious or what? Now, where's his chum got to? Recognise this former carpet capital, anyone? Full marks for those of you who spotted Kidderminster, the backdrop to rock god Robert Plant's formative years. Catherine's also in a hurry. Hello, how are you, dear? You're right. Hello, yeah, I've been here before. 
Well, do you want the good news or the bad news? Go on, you're going to tell me you've got £500 to spend. <laughs> the good news is that I'm here. Ta-da! The bad news is I have the grand total of, but this is important, £73.98. and pence. Really? Mm. And while you're about it, Ian, is there any affordable militaria in here? What have you got for me? <gasps> these are really rare, these are. Aren't they? You clearly have no idea. Ian has very kindly bought me these two medals. Korean War medals. Mm. Although Ian's hardly much of an authority either. Korean War medals they are. 1957, is it? I think. I would never buy these in a million years, but they do look interesting. So why not phone a friend? Especially if he's a bit of a genius on military matters. Paul, I have two items that could really help me, but I need some advice from someone who knows, and they are Korean War <laughs> medals. Ah, right, OK. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So what do, you, what do you have? I have got a Korean War medal from 1957, yeah, and it's brass, yeah. and on the back, with, with one of the um, ribbons on it, which is a blue and white stripy ah, ribbon. Th now, that's the UN Korea medal. That's the, the one you need is the British award. The other one, the ribbon is yellow and blue striped, and then yes. on the front we've got somebody slaying I'm, some yeah, serpents. I'm not interested in the front. Oh. I'm interested in the edge. Of course, the edge. Right, I've got <laughs> lots of numbers, about six or seven numbers, and I've got GNR, HL... Got Royal Artillery. Oh, it's good. So it, it's entry level for the collector. Uh, but you've got the pair, you've got the British Award and the UN Korea Medal. What, what are you going to have to pay for these? What are they worth at auction? Uh, how are they going in at 80 to 120? So could they sell at 80 pounds then? Yeah, I would hope so. Well, that has helped me immensely. Paul, uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much for your help, you as much. always. Lots of love. Bye-bye. Well, that was definitely worth doing. Back to Ian. Cards on the table. <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer. I am sat down. Can I offer you 30 pounds for them? No. Oh. <laughs> they cost £50. I don't mind letting you have them at £50, what they cost, to help you. That sounds like a very good deal. There you are. 45 Oh, give me 45 <gasps> <gasps> Are you sure? Are you absolutely look, sure? Look at all that money you've got now. No, I haven't. I've actually got... Oh. <laughs> Hang on. I've never seen her move that fast. <gasps> Five pounds! You don't know what that means to me. I think he deserves a medal as well. Now, after all that excitement, let's get back to Brimfield, where Tim also has the military bug. Oh, I really love this. Such a nicely made saddle. It's not your ordinary saddle, this is a mule saddle made in the Second World War, and do you know what? Without mules, we would have struggled to win the war. They played such an important part. Such as in Burma, where special operations used them in difficult terrain deep behind enemy lines. And if you just look at the quality of it, look at this. It's not an ordinary saddle. It's got wood, metal mounted, and I just think that is in superb condition. And this one's got lovely maker's name here, Rawl, and it's even dated 1940. It's got all of the bits and pieces you would want to see on it. It's just ready to go, and I think collectors will absolutely love it. There's no price ticket on this. I love things without a price ticket. I might go and find out how much it is, because if it's at a viable price, I think there might be profit in that. I could see that making maybe a few hundred pounds, something like that. What a great piece of history. Gosh, sound for Stroud, I'm sure. But let's hope they don't buy just Militaria. There's plenty else besides. This is a Gladstone bag, named after William Gladstone, Prime Minister. And usually they come in quite worn condition. But this one, look at that. It is in lovely order. And it's got these quality brass mounts here as well. And opening it up, look at that, a nice old lining. And actually, the inside is 
more dirty than the outside. <laughs> There's no reason why you can't use that. Your little overnight bag, maybe. Back in the late Victorian period when this was made, it might have been used by a doctor. I wouldn't normally want to buy a Gladstone bag if it was in quite worn condition, but when they're in top condition like this, it's just ready to go. Price ticket on it, £65. And actually, hang on one second. Now he's disappeared as well. Oh, he's back. I literally just walked past this, another doctor's bag, but I was sort of put off because it's missing its handle. But again, it's such a quality one. All the brass mounts at the top here. And if we open it up, the original green leather lining as well, which just looks lovely. And actually, it's not too much trouble to put a, another handle on. And I love the initials on here as well. Maybe a doctor. So. We've got 65 quid on that one. No price on this one, so I'm imagining it's free. I think I might see if we can do like a group deal on the lot um, and see how we go. Right, I'm off. I think our Tim might be about to part with quite a lot of money. <laughs> Stand by. I've had so much fun looking around your shop and I've actually brought half of it to your counter. Brilliant, that's what <laughs> I like to see. Now, two things have got prices on them. Two things don't. OK, I've got 140 on the saddle and I've got 25 on the Glasgow bag mm -hmm. without the handle. That'd be 285. I can probably do around the 220. How about 40 on the cap, 100 on the saddle and £60 pounds on the two bags? Does that work for you? So we're talking 200 quid for the, for the lot. I can work with that. Yeah, I can Fantastic. definitely work with it's that. It's a deal. Brilliant. Great stuff. Thank you, Thank you very much. Well done, chaps. Always nice to see a bit of proper spending. Oh, I'm so pleased. Look at that. Uh... Room for plenty more in there. Now, let's move east towards Worcestershire where Catherine's enjoying a brief respite from her shopping issues, just outside the village of Chelsea Walsh, to visit one of the oldest motorsports venues in the world. See, when you think of racing and race tracks, you think of that zzzz, that noise and the cars just zipping round. But here, it's peaceful, it's calm, you can't hear anything. Sheep, rolling hills, not sure. I'm in the right place. Don't be alarmed. It would be noisy enough if they were hill climbing here today. The event in which cars take turns to try to cover a short distance in the quickest possible time has been shattering the peace on this farm road for well over 100 years, as John Moody of the MAC can attest. The Midland Automobile Club oldest motorsport club in the country, ran an event here in 1905, and that club have run it ever since, exclusively. Who was the winner of the first race here? The first winner was a chap called Ernest Instone, and he won here in a Daimler. That must have been huge. Well, it was a very heavy car, but of course on the first competition event, it had four people on it, it had the driver, and another chap and a couple of ladies in Edwardian hats, etc. What sort of time would that have taken then to get up? It took uh, the winner 77.6 seconds. And the time today would be? Today, the record is 22.58 seconds. I mean, a lot's happened. The Midlands is the cradle of the British motor industry, and amongst the event's earliest supporters were men like Austin, Morris and Riley, keen to test their machines against the hill. But soon, the emphasis moved from reliability to speed, so that roadsters with passengers were superseded by Bugattis and Maseratis with star drivers at the wheel. I'm a bit of a novice, but are there any famous names who've competed and done the climb over the years? Hans Stuck was a pre-war German racing driver who drove a car called an Auto Union. He competed on the continent and he came here in 1936 with the Auto Union and drew the crowds in enormous numbers. Has the course changed from the early part of the 20th century to now? Only in terms of having a smoother road surface. Same width, same angle, same length. And still a farm road? Still a farm road. Time for Catherine to experience one of the oldest thrills in motorsport. 
in John's trusty MG, of course. The tension's mounting, John. I can feel the engine rem, revving. The flag's up. You're getting quite taken by this motorsport. I am, aren't you? I am. Go! Dangerous, could it be? Well, they know what they're doing, but, you know, if you've got a car that's doing 100 miles an hour, whether it's here or the M5 motorway, you've got to be careful. Plus, motorways aren't so steep or narrow. Whoa. Oh, this is great. This feels good. It is good. How fast would you normally be going along this? Well, if I was a competitor in this car, I mean, I'd be doing 60 or 70. But a racing car, you'd be... A oh, racing car would be even quicker. Watch out for the manhole cover, mind. I can see the finish. Here we come. Come on, John! Yay! We've done it! I don't know what we're going to do with you with all this shouting. <laughs> I think she's just letting off a bit of steam, John. Time to get back to a very different set of wheels. Worcestershire. 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 That's quite hard to say, actually, isn't it? If you're from Tennessee, perhaps. Night, night, y'all. Another day, another county. Oxfordshire. Everything's jumping up and down a bit today. Yeah, it's quite bouncy, isn't it? It is. It's the Cotswolds bounce. The Cotswolds bounce? I don't know it? if that's a thing, but it is now. <laughs> <laughs> it is now. That pair were rather bouncy yesterday, too, mind. Hoovering up all the military they could muster. Tim's Hall being a World War II mule saddle, some trench art, and a pair of civilian Gladstone bags. Hello, hello, hello. Leaving him with still almost £230 in his wallet, while Catherine's progress was also garlanded. Korean War medals, here we go. Although she's now got less than £30 for today's shopping. Oh, what beer should I be in here? A tall order, you might say. Uh... It's like hill climbing. It is. Cotswold Hill Climbing. Later, they'll be marching off to that military auction in Stroud, but the first skirmish today is in the Oxfordshire town of Burford. It's calm now, but you should have seen it back in AD 752, the site of a bloody battle between West Saxons and Mercians. West Saxons won that one. This looks interesting. This is like a proper Cotswold Stone Antique Centre. And you've got Cotswold Stone Antique Centre money. I have. <laughs> but do they have an economy section, we wonder? That was a bit of good parking, actually. I'm quite impressed. Mind you, it is a big car park. <laughs> Hardly West Saxons versus Mercians, is it? Which way are we going? I'm going this way. OK. Oh, we're splitting up already. We're splitting up. <laughs> good luck. Yes, God bless. Got some lovely things in here, too. Poor grazing, though. A silver frame, £65. That doesn't seem expensive. Looks like it's got some wear. Oh, what a pity. It's a fairly modern one, probably 1980s, by looking at the hallmark. I was hoping it was going to be 1880s, not 1980s. What a pity. I want to buy antiques. I don't want to buy something new. Oh, that's disappointing. I thought I'd found a gem there for 65 quid. Nice thing, but not for me this time. Or better still, some at local. If I say Aunt Sally to you, you're probably going to think of Wurzel Gummidge and Eunice Stubbs, who used to play Aunt Sally back in the 1970s, 1980s in the TV programme. But let's go back even further. Let's go back to Victorian times and playing a game outside. A game of... Aunt Sally. Aunt Sally? Yep. This is a game that was played with two teams outside, a bit like Skittles. This was known as Sally, Aunt Sally, the old lady's head. This would be on a spike, so you've got the little hole there. It would be raised from the ground, and a little bit like Skittles or a coconut shy, one member of the team at a time would stand ten yards away and lob this stick and try and knock out Aunt Sally. The French call their version Game of Carnage. I've heard about this, but to actually see this in the flesh and in the area where it was actually played, so on the way to Oxfordshire in the surrounding counties, this is where it was popular. So to see this is really quite fantastic. And priced at 
175 pounds well i'm sure aunt sally you are worth it but sadly i don't have the money to buy you so i'm going to put you back down well i'm right swizzled what's tim found <laughs> dinner time do you know what that's not a bad gong is it look at that nice quality it's probably Edwardian, early 20th century. It's got a lovely chromium plated bell supported by this oak frame, which is a horse's hoof. Quite like that. Sadly, it's missing its hammer, I suppose you would call it. Quite. There used to be a bell foundry here in Burford. But nice quality. There's no price on it. I could see that in an auction making 50 or 60 quid. Hmm. How to put my thinking cap on again. I'll pop it back for the moment. So much to see. Almost a purchase, then. He's working up to it. There's plenty more outside, though. So, while Catherine's search continues, it looks like something may have turned up. I've been looking at this quite unusual and interesting piece. You could speculate what this is. I mean, it may be, and it looks to me like it might be the top end of a small sarcophagus, possibly even medieval or Saxon. Um, and quite often these sarcophagus were repurposed later into other uses. And it's had this sort of channel cut down here, possibly some kind of filter for a press. And the recess here might have been a gate. And it's really interesting now because it's now been turned into a bird bath or some kind of water feature for a garden. Garden. If this is medieval or Saxon stone, I think that's quite a cool thing to have in your garden. It's priced up here, 225. I might have a gamble with this. It's quite a lot of money to risk, but you know, bear with me. Oh! Watch out, Giovanni. Hello there. Oh, hello there. Hello, how are you? I found a couple of things I'm interested in. So I'm interested in this. Um, I know it's missing its hammer and yes, yes. it's got a little bit of damage, but um, it's still a nice thing. Also, outside, right in the corner, you have a water feature, sort of a dome top with a stone, bath. Yeah, stone water. It. Yes. Um, have you had it a long time? Yes. Can it be? Yes. A, can it be a good price? Yes. <laughs> About a year and a half. Two, oh, have yes. you? Okay. We're asking two two five. Yeah. But we can do. 150. 150. Oh, that's tempting, isn't it? What about this bell? This, no price. We're asking that. 95. Uh, we can do 70. OK. Oh, I usually make decisions really quickly. Oh, so uh, do I. Uh, is there anything you can do if I bought the two together? Yes. Another £20 off 200. It makes it sort of 140 and 60. I would love to see this at about 50 quid. OK. And the stone okay. font at maybe 130. OK. Do you think we can get there or uh, not? 130 and 50, 180. Uh, we'll do 190. It's a deal. Let's Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Prego, Giovanni. Thank you very much. You're a gent. Thank you very bye much. Bye-bye, Tim. Any luck, Catherine? You see, this is just the sort of thing I would love. This is a hand-painted metal sign. Well, actually, no, it's not a sign. It's a weather vane in the form of a pheasant. So this has probably come from a pub or an inn or something. It would have been stuck outside. It's actually weathered rather well. And the price of this... You see, I would never be able to afford it anyway. It's £1,150. <laughs> oh, well, looks like it's bye-bye Burford. But while she's still looking for something to suit her budget, Tim's able to relax deep in the Cotswolds countryside, close to the Gloucestershire town of Sirencester, where he's come to hear about the first agricultural college in the English-speaking world from librarian Peter Brooks. The Victorian period was a very interesting time for agriculture. After the Napoleonic Wars ended in 1815, there was agricultural depression, there was a need to increase yields, but farming was still largely led by tenant farmers. There was no formal agricultural education in Great Britain at that time. The existing universities were simply not interested. So, in 1842, a meeting of the Fairford and Sirencester Farmers Club decided to establish what's now known as the Royal Agricultural University. It was built in under 12 months by a local builder, apart from the clock tower and the church, which were built later. Was there a lot of support? There was support. It was not government support. Oh. The funding for this was raised through the sale of shares and individual subscriptions. And in fact, the fourth Earl of Bathurst contributed half the cost of wow. the building, yeah. as well as a 400 plus acre farm for the college to use on a 99 year lease. The first students were admitted in September 1845, and amongst their teachers from the very earliest days were some of the brightest Victorian minds. 
Peter, you've brought me into this lovely looking library yes. um, here. And there's some yes. nice books laid out. And I, lo yep. I love the engravings of all the botanical prints they here. They are beautiful, yes. Um, so what are these? Well, these two closest to you are actually both by Professor James Buckman. He was a professor of natural history here. He was a botanist. He was a zoologist. He also taught geology. Like many Victorian gentlemen, he was, he was interested in everything. And he had a botanical garden here at the college where he carried out practical experiments, which, in fact, attracted the attention of Charles Darwin. And they corresponded, and Buckman is, in fact, mentioned in The Origin of Species, because Darwin was interested in the experiments as he was carrying out. Unfortunately, the principal at the time, the Reverend John Constable, was not inclined towards the theories of Darwin, and he was not keen on the experiments that Buckman was conducting, so he virtually forced Buckman out of his position, and then went ahead and destroyed the botanical garden. Shame. A later, much more lauded principal was Robert Bobby Bootflower. In charge from the 1930s, he was quite the pioneer, as his application of science to the feeding of cattle illustrates. Which brings us to the mechanisation at the Rural Innovation Centre, where Tim's hoping to try out one of these beauties. Hello there. I'm Tim. Hello. What's your name? My name's Roger. Nice to meet you. This looks like a great tractor. This is only a little tractor, but it's big enough for what we can do today. Come on then, let's have a go. It looks much more comfy than the Land Rover. We've got lots of gearboxes. Put that into number one, and off we jolly well go. The wheels are turning. We're away! <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear about the magic tractor? It went down the road and then just turned into a field. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I bet you are, Roger. But the other thing is, we flick that into reverse. Ah. Mind the camera, you two. Oh, my Lord. And it goes as fast backwards as forwards. Okay. This vehicle is reversing, this vehicle is reversing. I bet you're good at parking. We don't worry with the tractor, you just abandon it. <laughs> Time for our Tim to put her through her paces. Pop that lever there into number one. Oh, oh, we're away, we're away. Absolutely brilliant. Well done. Thanks yeah. Very cool. So, can we go a bit faster? Yes, we can. Have you got your own set of foot pedals in case? <laughs> Lordy. Here we go. So stop a minute. We're going to do the reversing okay. now. Ooh, I don't okay. think we can go reverse quite as fast as going forward. OK. Well, that mirror is supposed to be helping you see where you are. It OK. It work. It won't help if you don't look into it. Oh, sorry, the mirror. <laughs> oh. Oh, well, that was close. <laughs> oh, it's getting a bit tight here. Yes, all breakages must be paid for. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had a tractor, E-I-E-I-O. Now, <laughs> let's select a forward gear. Plenty to choose from. Because our auctioneer slash bone shaker naught is on the move. I am now on my way to my last shop. Between you and me, I am actually sorry about it. I might not be able to get anything. I might just end up going to the auction for a couple of medals. This could be dire. Well, I'm sure that Oxford can supply some inspiration. Get it? Inspiration, Spires? OK, please yourselves. Remember, she has just the £28.98 and 98p in her pocket. Art Deco Bakelite Dentist Teeth Sample Case. So, it may be wise to consult shopkeeper Vincent. There's a little door knocker there. It's very small. It's bronze. And it's actually... In the, it's Nelson. And I thought maybe that might be quite good. OK, maritime, but sort of loosely military. -er. Nelson is very well modelled, and I think it's rather cute. Vincent, may I possibly open the cabinet? Certainly you can, Kate yeah. Turner. Yeah. Here we go. What is it? Late 19th century. It looks very skinny there. It's yes. very malnourished yes, there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. there isn't it? it might, I tell you what, it might be 1905. So yeah. it's probably 100 years after his death. Yes. You know, commemorative, isn't it? Admiral Lord Nelson was shot by a French musketeer and died just as the Battle of Trafalgar was won. Would you have him on your knocker? Yeah. <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> I'm going to Stroud, though. If I'm selling in Portsmouth, he would be great, wouldn't he? I don't know if he's actually anywhere near my budget. Which is? Well, 
<laughs> Ideally, I would like to buy two items in your shop, and I have a total of £28.98. Pence. Well, if you can find something for around about nine pounds, we could probably do that for about 20. Right, so he could be 20. Yes. Over 50% off, a half Nelson. <laughs> OK, we're going to put you back, lay you down. OK. And, uh, OK, I'm going to look for, for something else. Perhaps Vincent can come up with that little something else. Vintage print block, 12 pounds. It's obviously on a speedway rider. Now, that's a little bit... Different. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> or then again, plenty more to choose from, I'm sure. Medals. Medals for swimming. This is a bronze medal that was awarded to somebody at King Edward the Seventh School in Sheffield in 1953 for a hundred yards backstroke. But what's really lovely, really lovely, is how beautifully cast they are. Look at that. There they are, the swimmers. Look at how they're cast, look at the waves crashing around them. And even in the distance where you can see the shoreline swimming, I think that's really beautiful. And that's obviously the school's badge on the front there. I really like that. Phil Oakey of the chart-topping Human League was a pupil, although a bit later, obviously. That is gorgeous. And we've got four of them here. We've got one for the senior champion swimmer in 1954, another 100 yards breaststroke, 1953, and the 400 yards freestyle in 1954. And definitely not Korean War. Four medals, 15 pounds. I can get those for my budget. We are home and dry. One, two, three, four. Plus Nelson. Let's go and see if we can do this. Out you come, Admiral. Vincent. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello. Well, I found something which yeah. I think is rather reasonably priced. Four swimming medals. Yeah. And then we've, of course, got our little... Um, Nelson. Nelson. Blessing. Can I make you an offer for the whole lot? I have £28.98. pence. Well, Can if I did you the whole lot for 28 that gives you 98 pence to buy something to eat on the way home. <laughs> 25. What a nice man. Six, seven, eight. I've got change! I've got money left! Who'd have thunk it? Best of luck. Thank you. Bye-bye. Tim will be impressed. Now together again and about to sell out. We are off to Stroud Auctions. Stroud. You've been there before? I have. I remember Stroud. Stroud Auctions I went to on my very first road trip and I'd lost a lot of money and I made my comeback. I think so. It's pretty good. Oh, now you've made me very happy. Stroud Auctions is where I made my comeback, so I think it's time for yours now. Right on, brother. Here, here. After a bit of shut-eye, of course. Say it loud. I'm Stroud and I'm proud. After beginning in Brimfield and covering quite a lot of counties, Catherine and Tim are going for gold in Gloucestershire at Stroud Auctions with internet bidding. Ooh. I don't know how I'm going to do this today because I've only got three items. <laughs> but you had under 100 quid. That's know, hard work. I know. It was excruciatingly <laughs> painful to try and find these items. Oh, here we go. Has Tim had a haircut? After you, madam. <laughs> yes, definitely. So, military, remember? And motorbikes. <laughs> Catherine, neatness to say, parted with almost all of her £73.98p for three auction lots. Oh, now, maybe I should start getting worried. Catherine has bought a pair of medals. We're in a military auction and she's come up trumps. We've got a pair of career medals here. This one's the Queen's career medal. They were issued in the early 1950s and they're just a, a good pair of medals. Oh, dear. The ribbon's a bit loose on this one. <laughs> I better put that back. I don't know if that was really like that. Tim, meanwhile, spent oodles. £390 on five auction lots. 
Tim has this amazing ability to zoom in on things in an antique shop and find the best quality. Now there's trench art and there's trench art. That is trench art. Out. Time to talk to the commanding officer in charge of this sale, auctioneer Nick Bowkett. Attention! There are lots of Nelson collectors out there. I don't know how many people have a door knocker nowadays. There's probably going to be 11, 1,200 people bidding online. I'm quite hopeful that the door knocker will do 50 or 60 pounds, uh, maybe a little bit more, who knows. The mule saddle is incredibly rare. However, it's not the sort of thing that's very easy to display. And I think you've got to be a pretty die-hard collector to want to collect a, a World War II mule saddle. It's something that hasn't come on the market for quite some time. So somebody may well want one. Doesn't sound convinced to me. Anyway, time to introduce bums to seats. Oh, are you excited about this one? Yes, I don't know why. First on parade is Tim's rather posh bit of trench art. And I can open the bidding up at £70. Yes. Well, 70 it's pounds. Fabulous. 75, 80, 85, 85. It's with me at £85. A little 85. bit more, come on. Selling then, £85. Fantastic. I think that's a I'm great very charming. Yes, very well spotted, Tim. It had a real touch of quality to it, yeah. and it was made with a lot of skill, wasn't it? It was a good piece. Now, Kismet or Kiss Me, can Catherine's Nelson Knocker also enjoy a victory? You wouldn't hear it, would you? <laughs> if you were upstairs, it's like tap, tap, tap. Okay. It's just not very useful, is it? It's a knocker. Knockers are useful. And I can open the pinning up at £30. 30, 32, 35, 38, 40, 40, 2, 45, 48, 50. The Nelson collectors are there. 5, 60, yes. 5, 70, 5. Still with me, 75, 80. I'm out, £80. Any other bids, £80. We'll sell then, £80. Well done. Oh That's Thank so you. good. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Looks a bit like a young Sir Cliff. That's amazing. I mean, that is absolutely stonking. More militaria? The Medhurst Mule Saddle. £200, he predicted. This could fly. It could gallop away. £60? Start me off. 60 bid, thank you. Room bid, 60, 60, 5, 70, 5, 80, 5, 90, 5, 100, 110. 120, 130. I think it's really gone quiet. 140, 150. Oh, this is exciting. 160, 160 oh, pounds. On Stuart's phone. The it's internet's gone off. Yes. Selling that at 160. That's a great Joe, result. I'm still, I'm, I'm pleased. That's, That's a profit. 60 pounds. Profit. 60 pounds. All in a day's work for our Tim. It's really good. Mm, it is, and I'm you pleased. You are very good at doing this. Thank you. You're you really are too. Well. Catherine's school swimming medals are up next. Were you a um, champion swimmer at school? Do you know what? I was quite good at swimming. Why are you selling your medals? Yeah, these are my medals. From the... I wasn't born in the oh, 50s. Oh, no, sorry. Okay. And I can open the pinning up at £20. Oh. There we 20 are. Pounds, you 22, see? 25, 28, 30, 30 I love it here. 2, 5, This is my favourite place in the world. Eight, 40, 2, 5, 48, commission's out at £48. <laughs> 48. And selling then? Someone's the found left, their long-lost swimming pounds. medals. <laughs> £48, pounds and I paid eight. See, this is your comeback. Much as Tim foretold, the Stroud effect. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stroud. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. Tim's little bell, only missing its thing-a-me striker, Jobby. Five, Do you think it's dinner time? 90, dong, dong. 90 <laughs> and I can open the bidding up at £90. Pounds. 90, 90, 90 pounds. pounds? Two commission bids, £90. Pounds. Selling then at £90. Come on, a little rest. more. £90. It was missing its Five. hitting it's thing. Five. Gone. Hammer? Hammer. Striker. Strike? Thing. It thing. was missing Hammer. its thing. Exactly. Never guessed they were auctioneers, would you? Well done, oh. my friend. Well done. We're right. making good profits today. You are today. genius. More, Tim. Are two bags better than one? We're about to find out. I can open the bidding up at £48. Oh, here we are. 48. 48 pounds. They look delicious. Mission bid, oh. 48 Any other bidding at £48? Oh, no. Selling, then, £48. Oh. Well, that was short and sweet. <laughs> oh. 
That was a bit of a shock. First loss of the day. How does it feel? <laughs> um, losing money isn't pleasant. Well, let's hope it was just a blip. Catherine's war medals are next. I wonder if her phone a friend is watching. I'd love you to just be jealous of one of my purchases. I am. This is your comeback, <laughs> definitely. A pair of medals. 60 pounds. Oh, here we go. 60 pounds, 60 on bid, 65. Straight in. 70, 80, 80 pounds, 85, 85, <gasps> There's 85, a phone 90. Bid. There's a phone bid. Sorry, that's excitement. 95. 95, 100. I love you, Tim. 110. 110, 110, 120, 120, 130 with short <gasps> telephone. This is 140. Just... Oh my goodness, me. 150. With you, root, you're in the, the room. I wish it was mine. At 150 pounds. Any more? <laughs> yes! You didn't double your money, you tripled your money. <laughs> Why don't we always go to Stroud? Da 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 happy <laughs> I love it. Now I wonder, do you call a Saxon expert a Saxonophist? Tim's Garden Gabble. And I can up the bidding up at £60. Pounds. Ooh, straight 60, 60, come on, we've got a long way to go here. 70, 75, 80, this five, is 90. Come on. 5, 100, 110, 120, 130, 150, 160, 170. 170 on commission. Don't 80, stop there. Don't stop there. 190. This is for 90. 200. Oh, 220. Yes. 220. 240. 260. This two, is good. Internet They've internet got internet. a couple of real keen bidders. Bids. 280. 300. <gasps> 300. 300 pounds. 300 pounds. Any other bid? 300 pounds. Sell. <laughs> they saved the best till last. Quite a day, eh? I think we should label this auction Catherine's comeback. I think I've, I am having a bit of a comeback, but yeah. you're still, I think, there. You've done brilliantly today. Well, I don't know what the numbers are, because there was profit all over the place. Should we go and count it up? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. This is good. Can't wait to discover the booty in their treasure chest. Catherine started out with a pretty paltry sum, but after auction costs, she's made a whopping great profit of over £150. Hooray! So she now has a very respectable £228.94p. While Tim, who began with well over £400, made an even bigger profit, also after costs. So he shot up to a very delightful £598.36p. Congratulations all round. Don't you love it? This auction is wonderful. For me, it's genius. It was just amazing. I am the military expert now. You are. <laughs> I am very close behind Snapping you, Tim. Very close. I better watch out.